character played by Hugh Jackman, formerly known as Wolverine, emerges from the depths of a limousine, appearing to be in a dazed and disoriented state. It is the dead of night. He staggers out of the limo and discovers a group of Mexican individuals attempting to pilfer the tires of the vehicle. Logan calmly attempts to mediate the situation, but tragically he is met with a gunshot from one of the gang members. Rising to his feet, Logan exposes his claws, a process that appears to be agonizing, yet his claws do not extend fully. Though he is subjected to a violent onslaught from the gang, he courageously withstands the attack and inflicts serious harm on them, ultimately causing many of them to flee in fear. As we see, on the present day from the perspective of the year 2029, we can ponder the changes that have taken place over the past decade. Looking no older than 50, Logan has still aged to over 170 years and is no longer the same fighter he once was. The declining efficacy of his remarkable regenerative faculties, combined with the toxic effects of the adamantium in his system, are gradually causing his demise. The unfortunate consequence of his actions is that he experiences physical pain and occasionally coughs up blood. It has been 25 years since a new mutant has been born, leaving the mutant population on the brink of total extinction. Since his birth, James Hollett has been making a living as a limousine driver in the city of El Paso, Texas. He carries an adamantium bullet with him in case he ever reaches a point in his life when he feels that ending it all is the only solution. As he waits for a client to arrive at the funeral, a woman by the name of Gabriela Lopez, Elizabeth Rodriguez, approaches him. Despite her assertion that she is aware of his identity and her request for his aid, Logan refuses to assist her. Gabriella drives away, leaving Logan with the lingering gaze of a young girl in the back seat. One day, the enigmatic figure of Donald Pierce, Boyd Holbrook, entered Logan's limo, introducing himself to the occupants. He seems to be well informed about Logan's involvement in the termination of the gang members and even implies to his additional job taking care of Charles Xavier near the border. Pierce affirms that he has knowledge of Logan having been contacted by a person of interest, and asserts his sole motivation for wanting what Gabriella has is that it is something that was taken from him. He kindly hands Logan a card and urges him to get in touch once he has located Gabriella once more. Donald is the head of security for Alkali Transigen, a company that specializes in biotechnology. Logan drove away, radiating intense anger. Logan journeys to an abandoned facility in Mexico, where he is accompanied by the clairvoyant mutant Caliban, Stephen Merchant, and is caring for the elderly Xavier, Patrick Stewart. Charles has been left a mere shadow of his former self, weakened and struggling with a debilitating neurological disorder which triggers seizures. His mutation has resulted in the ability to produce intense psionic blasts, causing paralysis to any unfortunate enough to be within close range. Logan must carefully administer the prescribed serum to help maintain Xavier's condition, though the side effects can sometimes cause confusion and memory impairments. Xavier has been deeply affected by the tragedy of losing his school and his friends from the X-Men, and he believes that Logan is simply waiting for him to pass away. Logan and Caliban engage in a discourse concerning the feasibility of procuring a sufficient quantity of medicine for Xavier. Caliban laments the difficulty of looking after Xavier, especially when Logan refuses to share his own needs, which are quite obvious to the albino. Logan abruptly leaves in a state of distress. Subsequently, he is notified of two passengers needing transport and sets off for a motel. As he continues his journey, he reunites with Gabriella, accompanied by a young girl who Gabriella introduces as her 11-year-old daughter, Laura, Daphne Keen. She generously provides Logan with $50,000 to aid them in their journey to Eden in North Dakota, in addition to handing him an envelope with a set of coordinates and an additional $20,000. After some contemplation, Logan eventually consented and began his journey back home to make the necessary arrangements. Xavier was informed by the other individual that their shared aspiration of departing and purchasing a vessel may actually become a reality. Upon arriving back at the motel, he discovers that Gabriella has tragically been murdered and Laura is nowhere to be found. Logan discovers that Gabriella had been hastily composing a message warning him that they had been discovered. Logan arrives home feeling disheartened but is taken aback when he discovers that Laura has snuck into the back of his limousine. Xavier eagerly welcomes the young girl and attempts to persuade Logan that she requires their assistance. Despite Logan's uncertainty, 
He correctly anticipates that Pierce will eventually locate them, and soon enough he arrives at their doorstep. Logan claims Laura is not there and, when Pierce persists, Laura throws a pipe at his head, knocking him out. Logan suggests to Caliban that they take Piercing out into the desert and leave him there. In order to protect himself from the sun's intense rays, Caliban wraps himself in layers of clothing before taking Pierce's body away. However, at this moment, a team of Transigen's elite forces, the Reavers, appear on the scene. They retrieved Pierce and detained Caliban. The Reavers ventured back to the plant, with two of their members entering to bring Laura back. Logan and the others waited outside while Laura, seemingly at ease, was finishing her bowl of cereal. The group outside was alarmed by the clamor coming from inside, including the sound of cries and gunshots. Laura arrives and solemnly places the severed head of one of the Reavers at Pierce's feet. She then strides ahead, unleashing two adamantium claws from each of her hands and one from each foot, and launches a fierce assault on the Reavers. A stunned Logan finally helps her fight and flees the scene in the limo with Xavier and Laura in the back seat. Caliban is cruelly captured by the Reavers and subjected to intense sunlight in an effort to force him to use his abilities to locate the three people. Logan inquires about Laura and Xavier explains that she shares many of the same qualities as him. After carefully examining Gabriella's phone, Logan discovers a video which discloses her prior employment at Transigen in the genetics department. However, the phone dies before the video can finish. They take a pause in their journey to acquire necessary supplies from a convenience store. When Dave Davis, the clerk, attempted to prevent Laura from stealing some chips and sunglasses, she was able to push him aside and almost scratch him before Logan stepped in to stop her, solemnly declaring, That's not okay. He then takes a phone charger and cigar and leaves. That evening, Logan observes the remainder of Gabriella's video as the phone recharges. She meticulously recorded her role as a nurse in the genetic testing of mutant children, overseen by Dr. Xander Rice, Richard E. Grant, with the goal of creating super soldiers. Through the utilization of DNA from deceased mutants, offspring were created and brought into the world via anonymous surrogate mothers who would not be remembered. The young group of individuals, including Laura, were given the designation X-23 and raised in an environment of strict discipline. Simple pleasures, such as birthdays, were frowned upon. The experiment was deemed a failure due to the fact that the children sustained too much emotion and often refused to follow orders. With the introduction of X-24, it was decided the children would be terminated. In an attempt to save them from harm, Gabriella worked to create an escape plan and designated Eden as a safe haven where the children could find refuge and live without fear in Canada. In the video's closing moments, Gabriella acknowledges that, Although she is not Laura's biological mother, she loves her deeply and unconditionally. Expressing her remorse to Logan, she humbly apologizes for deceiving him about the amount of money she would owe him but still earnestly hopes that her biological father will protect her. Upon entering Oklahoma City, the trio found a hotel to stay in, where Logan noticed Laura had been reading an X-Men comic book. He discovers that the coordinates to Eden are mentioned in the book, leading him to believe that the journey is a farce. Enraged, he confronts Laura and Xavier's disapproval, informing her that the X-Men stories she has been reading are purely imaginary and that Eden does not exist in reality. Upon departing from the room in which Xavier and Laura were situated, Logan descends the stairs only to discover that the Reavers had tracked their presence. Logan is stunned to observe that the entire group has suddenly become motionless, understanding that Xavier is enduring another seizure. Logan's unique ability to partially resist the effects of the environment gives him the strength to push forward and make his way back to the room in which Laura and Xavier are being threatened by the Reavers. Logan takes decisive action, eliminating the obstacles in their path, and then injects Xavier with a serum that reverses his paralysis. The trio then make their escape in a new vehicle. Logan, while on the road, chooses to switch off the radio as a report begins to discuss the correlation between the incident in. Oklahoma City and an event that happened in Westchester a year before. They almost become victims of a near miss, veering off the road to dodge a pickup truck carrying a trailer full of horses. Xavier persuades Logan to assist, leveraging his telepathic abilities to return the horses. Introducing himself as Will Munson, Eric LaSalle, the driver is accompanied by his wife Catherine, Elise Neal, and their son Nate, Quincy Faust. 
Logan selflessly lends a hand in getting their pickup out of a difficult situation. Catherine graciously invites Logan and his relatives to join her and Xavier for dinner, to which Xavier joyfully agrees. Logan is keen to depart straight after dinner, but Catherine suggests they stay the night since it is already late. Logan, out of care and consideration for Xavier, consents and gently escorts him up the stairs to his bedroom. Observing that their water supply had been altered, will set out to explore the situation further, with Logan accompanying him. Upon discovering and resolving the blatant water leak from the pump situated in the distance, they were faced with the daunting confrontation of a mob of thugs all under the control of a man who owned the property. Upon discovering that Will had been subjected to harassment for allegedly skimping on payments, Logan retaliated by forcefully striking one of the thugs in the face with their own rifle and then breaking it over his knee, thus effectively intimidating them into retreating. Meanwhile, at home, Xavier is in bed and notices Logan coming into the room. He begged him to be patient with Laura, who was sleeping on the floor next to them, and showed remorse for what had happened a year ago, his voice wavering with emotion. Xavier had a massive seizure at his school in Westchester, which killed off a lot of the X-Men. He apologizes but Logan pushes his claws through Xavier's chest. Laura sticks up for Charles. The attacker turns out to be a mindless and merciless clone of Logan, the X-24. The mutant abducts Laura and slaughters Nate and Catherine. When Will comes back, the X-24 knocks him down and Logan runs up to get Xavier, who's barely hanging on. Logan comforts him. It wasn't me. While helping him downstairs. The Reavers are hanging out with Pierce and Dr. Rice outside. Caliban's stuck in a surveillance van. The thugs who messed with Will before showed up at the house looking for revenge, but X-24 took care of them. Logan sets Xavier down in the bed of a pickup truck. Charles mentions the name of their boat and passes away. Logan, grieving, gets into an intense battle with X-24. Meanwhile, Caliban fights back against his captors and sets off two grenades, muttering the phrase his mother once told him. Beware the light. The van explodes, tossing Pierce out while Rice manages to get away. Logan's about to lose to X-24 until Will swoops in with his truck and pins the mutant against a piece of farm machinery. Will keeps shooting X-24 with a shotgun and then turns the gun on Logan. The gun runs out of bullets and Will drops dead. Logan grabs Laura and takes off with Xavier's body in tow. The next morning, Dr. Rice and his people clean up the area and give X-24 a shot to help him get better. Logan buries Charles in a secret spot in the woods while Laura looks on. Afterwards, he heads back to their truck and starts wrecking it in anger before passing out. Later, Logan wakes up in a medical facility. Dr. Handy let Logan know he was a mutant and offered to help him, knowing that the adamantium in his body was putting him in danger. Logan turns down the offer and leaves with Laura. He reluctantly thanked her, and she finally said gracias in response. Logan's confused why Laura never said anything before, but then she starts babbling in Spanish about her transigent pals. She insists to Logan that they meet in Eden, and eventually he gives in, only to prove that it doesn't actually exist. The two just managed to make it, and Logan was so exhausted that he passed out, so Laura had to take the wheel and finish the journey. A lift was dropped at a cliff for Logan, so him and Laura, along with the kids led by Richtor, Jason Janow, could finally relax. The kids pulled a prank on Logan and shaved his beard while he was sleeping to make him look like he did when he was younger, but he wasn't too pleased about it. At home, Xavier's in bed and notices Logan coming into the room. He begged him to be patient with Laura, who was sleeping on the floor next to them, and showed remorse for what had happened a year ago, his voice wavering with emotion. Xavier had a massive seizure at his school in Westchester, which killed off a lot of the X-Men. He apologizes but Logan pushes his claws through Xavier's chest. In the morning, the kids had already left and Logan was about to follow when he noticed the Reavers had caught up with them, presumably tracking the kids. Logan sprints to stop the Reavers from getting to the kids. Even though the kids have superpowers, they're still outnumbered. Injecting all of the healing agent at once, Logan kills most of the Reavers and confronts Dr. Rice who has rounded up the children and is holding them at gunpoint. Rice reveals he's the son of the guy Wolverine killed when he busted out of the Weapon X project. Rice admits responsibility for the extinction of mutants thanks to a virus developed by Transigen that was seeped into food supplies.
Logan, in a desperate move, takes out the guy before he can carry on, then goes after Pierce. But X-24 is freed, and Logan has to face off against his clone again. The kids team up against Pierce when they see he has control of X-24, using their powers like electrocuting, freezing, and manipulating plants. Take him out. Once Logan's healing powers start to fade, his younger clone overtakes him and X-24 eventually stabs Logan with a dead tree branch. Laura then uses the adamantium bullet Logan carried with him to shoot X-24 in the head, obliterating it. She sprints to Logan and gets him down from the tree, but Logan's injuries aren't getting better. Logan tearfully tells Laura to go with the others, they're free now. She's sobbing, calling him daddy, and Logan replies with a rueful, guess this is what it feels like, before he passes away. The children bury Logan and raise a cross at the head of the grave as Laura recites from a western. The kids then go, their future undetermined but liberated. Laura tilts the crucifix on Logan's grave sideways to resemble an X. Thank you for watching.